everybody, and welcome back to the Coffee Vodka Podcast. I'm your host, Dre, joined here by the one and only, John. How's it going? Pretty peachy. How about yourself, sir? I'm doing wonderful. You know, this is not our first podcast doing this, me and you together. And, you know, I'm excited to be here with you. Hey, I am. Dre, I heard something. What the hell are... What is going on in here? We're having sex. We are making deep, dark love. Why are we recording it? It we're selling it. I don't give a shit what you do on your personal time, but why are we recording this? We're selling it. Only fans. Alright. Wait a minute. You're doing on medium C- V time? No. So what? No. <laughs> this is the John B back door with his wee <laughs> <laughs> Well, shit, can I get involved, guys? Yep. No. We also yeah, take EBT calls. It's a threesome now. Y'all making profit, so I just want to be a, have a cut in this, all yeah. right? Well, uh, you interrupted us. This is our studio, so you didn't we say... We were talking. You had no tie or nothing on the, the doorknob, no I'm nothing. I'm sorry, was the door enter? closed? Yeah, but maybe well. we wanted to be caught. This could be it, too. We're <laughs> 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 trying to add a little more in here. You will never know our true intentions. Look at the money signs just go up. The dollars are going up now. Oh, I can man. see it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, oh. guys, we do have a very special guest here, Mr. <laughs> uh, John Burrell, as it recently announced. Yes! Hey, hey John, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for coming on here. He's the guitarist and co-founder of a uh, local band, uh, Countless Days. Yes. D-A-Z-E, because people do get confused. <laughs> John, I'm not going to lie, I was one of them that did. See? I did. So was so. my wife. It's I was okay. like, hey, it happened. I was the only one who knew. I was like, no. Like, yeah. D-A-Z-E. So much cooler. Kind of like Days the Confused. Yeah. That's kind of what I went with after I, I figured it out. <laughs> I was like, yes. But dude, love y'all's music, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate You're doing it. good. Y'all are, uh, been around for a little bit. Yeah, we actually had to take a break and then... We came back. We took a break because I had to have surgery and stuff like that. But we came back and we're coming back a little strong. And we, which I'm happy too. So Heck it's yeah, good. Man. Yeah. So how long y'all been running now? Uh, we've been back together probably I'd say seven months. But if you were to go back to when we started, we started back in I think 2014 is when we actually started. No, awesome, yeah. man. So that's going on for a while. Yeah, as a reggae band that didn't quite make it. <laughs> reggae. Reggae. We we got so and it was like. Yep, we're going to start a reggae band. We wrote one entire reggae song, and that's as far as it went. <laughs> <laughs> who's, okay, whose idea would, was that? I who, have to ask. Whose idea? I, th- I have to ask that. I want to say it was the drummer, Calvin Baggett. I, I don't believe say, it. You're the one in the beanie right now. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah. I, I am say. in a beanie. <laughs> but it makes me look like I got more hair when I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to hear a full Countless Days reggae album. <laughs> Southeast Missouri reggae? <laughs> yes. I think this is the new thing. What? So we might have been on to something. We just never finished it. You missed your chance. Man, what? Yeah, I just want to know how that came about, man. I mean, literally, it was, uh, which I've known Calvin, oh, God, since probably 2003. And Calvin's the drummer? Yes. Right? And uh, he invited me over, and then, like, I knew John Gammons from church. And, other and he's the singer. And I said, I know. He was like, well, Calvin's like, let's, let's write a reggae song. So I striped it up. And we wrote an entire one. This before we had a bass player. It was just us three. And there's a YouTube video of the song and everything. And I'm very inebriated. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a full mane of hair. I used to have a glorious nice. mane. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was luscious. We were slathering repeat every day. <laughs> but uh, it's on YouTube. And, and you can hear us giggling and laughing before we kick it off. But yeah, the whole thing's on there. And uh, then we got the bass player, Daniel Moore. He's a little bit older than us, we'll just say. And he's from Kentucky, and then we formed the band, and then they're saying, no, because Daniel's into heavy stuff, too. Like, uh, he likes Deftones, Seven Dust, cool. even heavier stuff, too, like Cattle Decapitation. Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah. And See, that's like jumping a whole nother genre, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it yeah, really yeah, is. Oh, yeah. When you got a song named Four String to Reassignment, that's a totally <laughs> different genre. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I've always been a metal guy, but I've also been into, like, Shred and stuff. And mm-hmm. then with my father, I grew up. Listen to like Buddy Holly and all that, and then he was a Conway Tweedy fan. Hell know? yeah, I love some Conway Tweedy, man. So you know, I listened to that stuff. Yeah, to me, yeah. that was country, and then I grew out of it. Gotcha. But I mean, you take that, and you take John's background. He's more of a pop singer kind of guy, and if you put all that together, and you got our little stew, countless day stew. I, <laughs> I, I think that's it. cool. It's an interesting mix. Yeah. A bunch of people come from different backgrounds. I think that's really cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I think that's what, but you can always tell no matter what we play, it's got our spin on it. Gotcha. And it don't matter if it's, uh, give me one reason, it's going to have our spin. 
Yes, sir. That's really cool, man. You, you, you put your own mark on it. That's what we try to do. We don't try to play. Now, there's certain like solos, like if we were to play like Come to Be Numb or something, you know, I'm going to play note for note. There's some solos that I just do my thing on. Yes. But like when we do Say It Ain't So, I play that note for note. There's, there's some that has you should show it respect and play it note for note, in my opinion, as a musician. Is there some songs you just like to let go on? Oh, yeah, yeah. What would I, be one of them? One of my favorite ones, believe it or not, and there's plenty of videos of it, is uh, Seven Nation Army. Really? Live, live I watched that today, actually, one of the videos you played live. It was uh, uh, that song. Y'all were doing. Was it the one that looks like it was recorded with a toaster? Yes, yeah, kind of a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't even have 240p. It was just one. It <laughs> was one pixel. <laughs> and that was me. <laughs> I took up the whole thing. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was one of my favorite ones. That was a cold fucking show though man it was like it was supposed to be get down to like 40 and end up being like 35 and Woo! I was freezing mm. and everybody the whole audience is by the propane heaters though yeah. like, was he dressed appropriately yeah oh I had a hoodie and I had a high vis uh, beanie on and it looked I mean it outshined everything <laughs> <laughs> I think my beanie got more attention than me but <laughs> that's one of my favorite ones I do a, there's some I do a lot more shredding on than what that one's one, and then Blue Jean Blues. I love that one. I love riding the storm out in the Ariel Speed Wagon. I don't know if that's the actual people that wrote it, but that's the one I learned was that one. Gotcha. And then there's my songs that we write. You know, like I take time and write my solos out. There's sometimes, though, I'll go in and improvise, and God, that's a good cut. Let's hope I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that being honest there. Yeah. that's cool it's like, it's like Keith Moon he never played a song the same no matter what you just, yeah I like that though you're gonna yeah. find better versions well to quote uh, Frank Zappa he actually said Frank you, Zappa yeah you know if you wanna hear it playing the same way you go buy the record but exactly. If you want to see it something different, you come watch me live. Yeah, I want a live yeah. experience. If I'm paying money to come see you, I don't want to hear the record. I would just listen to the record, like they just said. Man, like coming to see you guys live, do y'all do uh, covers and your own songs all together? Yeah, mix well, it up, we, or how do y'all do it? We do around forty songs. No shit. Jesus. In a set. How long, how long no. is y'all set? Uh, uh, <laughs> I was like, damn. We'll Bob. play. We'll play like an hour and then take like a fifteen minute break. Okay. Then play another hour and maybe take a ten minute break. Depending on the depending on the crowd. Yeah, yeah. If the crowd's really booming, we might take a five or ten minute break just long enough to piss and come right back and maybe do a shot or something. That's yeah. cool, man. Heck of course, yeah. you get people, you know, buying you beer and stuff yeah. like that. And, you can't say no. Hey, no. no. That's rude. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's rude. Yeah. That's uh, rude. And there's been some things going on that shows that I could tell you, but let's not go to a different rating. For <laughs> legal <laughs> reasons. <laughs> when you write a book one day, we will read about these stories, sir. No, I'll yeah. type it. I ain't writing it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't writing it. It's like a spider fell over in ink and had a seizure. You can't understand anything. <laughs> My teacher always made me type shit. It's like, all right, nope, he ain't writing in cursive. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> But yeah, we uh, usually, we'll try to, we'll print out a set list, and it's usually got like anywhere from 35 to 40 songs, and we'll have like an extra 8 or 10 on the side in case we got to add filters. Now, do y'all follow y'all's list? Do you follow y'all's list? Sometimes we, it depends on the crowd. Like if we look out there, one of one of my absolute favorite songs to play is Afro Man's Coat 45. Hell yeah. <laughs> of course, I do my version of it on the solos and stuff, but like, you know, if we look and it's like mainly like, 60, 70 year old people. I don't think we're going <laughs> <laughs> to like, we play half for a man. But man. if it's people around my age, younger, that's heard it, yeah. we'll play it. Mm-hmm. We play a lot of 90s too. Like if you could only see Semi Charmed Life, uh, Inside Out. That's cool, man. I like how y'all mix that up. Yeah, I, we, I mean, I'm a 90s kid. So, I, uh, uh, funny, 90s. Yeah. <laughs> so do you usually want to play more covers than you do your own original songs? Uh, we got 12 originals, I want to say now. So we try to mix them in. Yeah, with y'all the, try to hit all twelve. Mm-hmm. How's the fan reaction usually whenever y'all play those? There's one that gets me so pumped because it's Mississippi River, which is like one of our big ones, and we're re-recording that right now. Awesome. But uh, I've actually we've played that at some shows and heard people singing the lyrics with us, and you really? want to talk about a feeling? Oh, Man, that's a dude. Whole, better than any drug that I've never done. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, it's just, it's a great feeling, man, to watch the audience sit there and they're singing the words to your song that you wrote, that you spent your time on. Did you ever, 
Have you ever shed a tear? That happened. Uh, no, I've gotten goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> man, I was like, man, that would like bring a tear to my eye, I think. Maybe two drops of urine. That might be a medical condition. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That was great. But yeah, that's you know that's one of my favorite ones that we do, and then uh, revival, which I kind of let y'all hear a little snippet of. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. I am that too. Yeah. That's awesome. I think that's one of my yeah. favorite tracks y'all have released. I know on Spotify, I think my favorite one on there is Wound. Yeah, that one's good. There I was, like that there one. was another one. Uh, Wound was good, and then the uh, a lot of people like Sins of the Flesh because that's a little bit of a we listen one. to that one too. Yeah, that one kind of uh, gets a little loose. Cruise Control, Cruise Control, Cruise Control, yeah, something like, is I like Cruise that. Control? Yeah, we, Cruise yeah. Control. Mean, but Sins of the Flesh, Sins of the Flesh was good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our bass player Daniel wrote that, and then uh, most of the ones it's me and John that write, and then Calvin. Calvin is one of the most phenomenal musicians I've ever met in my life, which everybody in the band is. I'm not just trying to sing. It's just yeah. I've known him one of the longest. Yeah. Big John plays the tambourine half the time, sometimes. Like when he can get him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like we a mean tambourine. tambourine Hell yeah. Especially <laughs> the earlier Coffee and Vodka episodes, man. We got to, I got a tambourine we somewhere. Got some, yeah. Yeah. It's been misplaced, but we will find it again. Well, I've reorganized <laughs> this room four separate times since we'll be getting this. It's like Calvin's adding the song that he wrote to our new album which is awesome because like I said Calvin can play drums he can play guitar he can play bass Daniel can play guitar when Daniel plays drums we get worried <laughs> but he does good on drums I'll play a little drums bass I'm trying to teach myself piano so when y'all when y'all's music do y'all write together or is it kind of like a, do y'all have your own little thing y'all do uh, the most recent song our newest one that we recorded and released and everything was called Can't Let Go. It's like a two mm-hmm. minute and 30 second song. But I actually wrote the riff. It was meant to be like a metal, metal as fuck song. Oh. Was, I wrote it on a seven string. Okay. Oh, shit, yeah. Um, but then John came over and then we was like, let's go to the park. And, you know, it was pretty damn. We sat there and I brought my uh, Spanish guitar and I was playing on it. And uh, we wrote the entire song. It ended up being a lot different. And then we had to leave because it was like Children of the Corn came out. Like 70,000 <laughs> kids came out of nowhere. And they're like, play something dramatic. I was like, yep, no, not, not, not being here. <laughs> they like, play something dramatic. What do, what do you want me to play, Jeopardy theme song? Come on now. <laughs> but, you know, usually I'll come up with a couple riffs and then I'll send it over Facebook or something to John. And then if he likes it, or I'll send it to the band's uh messenger and then oh, yeah we like this 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 yeah. that's usually because I, I got my own little studio that i got at the house that i got my it's easy drummer too but it, they sound phenomenal yes i got they it do. that's a good program yeah i love it that's what i use on my uh, electric kit yeah it's awesome you, i got a little uh i can either program it or i'll use the little uh keypad i got that i bought yeah but i use it to play cello and stuff too i'm in the middle of kind <laughs> of trying yeah, yeah. i'm trying to write some kind of classical song because i just Try to listen to classical. What's yeah. what's drawing you to that, man? Man, uh, I started listening to Yinve Malmsteen. He was like a hardcore shredder, and uh, but he likes like, you know, Beethoven, Bach, and stuff like that. And then I started listening to that, so I got a lot of that. Like if you were to go through my playlist, there's that meme <laughs> on Facebook where it's got Tupac and Beethoven. Hands. <laughs> That's my playlist. Hell you know, yeah. I respect that, man. That means you you are so open to all kind of music. You're not as focused on one. Set genre. No, and you, you, know? you can't be if you're going to be a musician. Exactly. you got to appreciate no. what people do. Yes. Now, there's some stuff I think that's overproduced and over, just it shouldn't be. Yeah. I, I'm not saying I'm a purist, but I do embrace some of the newer stuff, but you got to also go back to your roots. Man, see, I love that. And I see like a, you know, I see like people my age and that come out younger and was doing like hip hop or whatever, and now they're getting older, they're going back to the roots, they're reaching back and they're like, Doing collabos with like country artists and stuff like well, that. When you know, Post Malone that did one with Ozzy Osbourne, yes, 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 and it worked out. It's like I think it, Ozzy, even on uh, it, when his not, not his most recent, the one before him, was actually produced by uh, Post Malone's. Um, Could, would you ever imagine that producer? Should, yeah, would you ever imagine that shit would happen? No, but I think it's awesome. It's awesome. And, I love and it. you can tell the influence on there. Yeah. Now me, I'm a sucker for classic Ozzy. But I think it's cool that he, we got to hear more modern Ozzy. What did y'all Ozzy think, though, when y'all people. first heard about it? Did well, you... see, I didn't like Post Malone. Of course, I didn't know him. 
I was kind of prejudging. That's why I said, uh, yeah. And then I actually looked up some YouTube videos. I'm like, oh, hey, he actually knows how to play. He's not Machine Gun Kelly, thank God. <laughs> he actually knows how to play. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. seems like he has a genuine love and respect for he does, music. He does. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him that's that. That's the biggest thing. Because it's like I agree with what you're saying. A lot of music today is so over manufactured. Mm-hmm. It's, it's well, nothing but You can but program corporate. everything on a computer yeah. now, and everything's got to be precise on the metronome. You know, and we there's some songs that won't, like the songs that we write, we might use a metronome. But a lot of times, it's like we got a good feel for it. We don't yeah. need them. And it's like if you're listening to some Led Zeppelin, ACDC, a little old classic stuff, some of the music might speed up or drag a little bit. Oh, dude, it? it's crazy how much the time can fluctuate on there. Like, I don't know if you uh, watch on YouTube or Rick Beato. Oh, I love him. Oh, my God. The dude's an idol. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, have you seen where he tried to uh, quantize John Bonham and drumming? It just didn't sound right. It's just, it's uncomfortable. There's no uh, human feel to it at all. And John Bonham is one of my favorite drummers. Oh it, yeah, it's his feel. His and that's what I told Calvin. He reminded me of was John Bonham. The way he's got the feel, the groove, and yeah. everything. And he lets his metal side come out on a lot. Of, there's a song we do by Alex Clare called "Too Close." But it's not his version. Oh, it is heavy metal like I'm doing. <laughs> there was one song on Spotify. I can't remember what it was, but there was like a second like double bass pedal. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like a break in the music and just did it and then back into it. Was it one of ours? Yes. It was probably Sins of the Flesh because it stops. And But when it does that little dun, 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 Calvin's just. Yeah. Yeah, he's 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 a phenomenal drummer. Like I said, he's got some of the best groove I've ever played, and it's like me and him can read each other real easy. And that's and so me and Daniel. There's a lot of times when I'm doing a solo, I'll walk over to Daniel. We try to do a little something like ZZ Top. Or <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're not gonna see me though. Throw my guitar around my neck. Come so, on, man, one time. <laughs> they, they cost too much money for me to do that. <laughs> what guitar do you play? I was wanted to ask you about gear. Uh, my guitars that I mainly play. Right now, it's been the EVH Bumblebee, and then uh, Green PRS uh, McCartney 954, nine, something, it's something like that. Yeah. But uh, my amp, I just got a new amp. It's a Marshall Pletzi I use. It's kind of the old school amp. So I'll use some pedals for that, or I'll use a Friedman amp, which is like a Marshall that's modded. I got you. But I kind of st- stick to the British sound, because I like the way the guitar cuts through. It's got more mids and highs for me to cut through. Which I got an EVH amp I use when we do our really metal sets sometimes. Sometimes I will take two amps. Most times I'll just take one. What songs you got to do for the really metal sets? Uh, like I said, Too Close will come out like, okay, it's going to sound poppy. And then it's not. <laughs> not at all. I got my most. And we've talked about doing, because we've had a lot of people shout, uh, Inner Sandman or Master of Puppets since Stranger Things. Oh, And yeah. I'm so happy that's brought back. Dude, I'm so happy that the kids are getting into Metallica. That is a blessing. That is cool. Have you thought about doing your own twist with it, though? Oh, yeah, well, of course. Fucking hey, man. That's what I'm talking Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I, I know you, we was talking earlier before the show. You said something that, you know, you like kind of adding your own twist to stuff. Mm-hmm. Doing some Metallica? And... Oh, and your own little spice in there? That could be fun. Yeah, I do a lot. Like, it don't matter what song. Like, if we're doing a... Uh, you never can't keep you it see? <laughs> Can't you see? Seriously, can't you see? I'm not going to play... Can't you see? Yeah. I'm not going to play it note for note, because that's one of them that every bar band does. Gotcha. So I try to put my own little spin on it. But you said there's certain songs you don't want to mess with. Like with David Gilmore on Pink Floyd. You, you know, you try to stay true to it. Yeah. Or like... See, or what's one uh, another one that's stayed true? Of course, one of them is the '90s. I don't try to do too much on it because there wasn't a lot of guitar solo. Exactly, yeah. In yeah. the '90s, yeah. Uh, I try to stay pretty true to one. We do "Love Me When I'm Gone," the solo to that, mm-hmm. and then like there's some that I do my own. Like uh, if you could only see, we rock that up a lot more than what it is. Is there any kind of you know? Is there any artist that's coming up now that you kind of listen to? Uh, man. I've not really listened to too much new music here lately. I've mainly been going back to the classics and yeah. revisiting because I mean, that's where the, where the music's at. I yeah, guess, yeah. My one of my absolute fa- my, I guess you could say my top four guitarists would of course be Jimi Hendrix, of course. Mm-hmm. But it, <laughs> yeah, uh, Van, I think that, I think that's the free space in the bingo card for any. Yeah, guitarist, yeah. I don't, <laughs> and then Van Halen, and a lot of people, Van Halen's leads are phenomenal, but a lot of people don't give him credit on his rhythm. Yes. Because he had such a phenomenal, and the drummer, Alex, was phenomenal. That whole band was good. Yeah. And then I go, Yves Malmsteen, which he's just a hardcore shredder. And then the one I listen to now a lot is, I naturally got 
he I got my dream guitar, which is his. It's a Guthrie Govan Charvel, but it cost me thirty four hundred dollars, and Ooh. I had to get it from New York. But that thing does anything I want it to. But I've only took it up one time to play, and it was at that show I almost got murdered at. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, why? Why? Only, why is it? The, what, is there? You just don't want to. I'm so nervous, man. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. it's like driving a Ferrari. Do you really want to put a dent in it? No. Yeah. So with yeah. you taking this first from Bay Mountain, have you thought about scalloping a guitar? I, I have one. Oh, you do? I do. I got. What's a, the feel like between that? Because I've never played one. Do you I actually press? Like into the fret, or if you press too hard, your note will actually go sharp. So mm. you got to have an extremely light touch. A lot of people think, "Oh, it makes you play faster, easier." No, it it does not. You got to barely touch the string. If you press too hard, it does go out of key. Oh, and I mean that's cool if you're trying to do jazzy stuff. That's what we say when we mess up and hit the wrong note. It's jazz. It's <laughs> temporary <laughs> jazz. It was meant to be. But uh, no, it's it's one of my favorite because I got into Yin Bay and I actually had his signature model. Uh, oh. Strat, but I ended up having to sell it. For, times got hard, but I got I went and bought a scallop neck, had a Woody Sharp put it on. I put my own pickups in. You know, I, I do work on guitars and stuff like I like soldering and stuff. I'm getting yeah. better. It went from <laughs> looking like goose shit to something or something. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I'm getting better. But I like to work on my own guitars, not the three thousand dollar ones. I let the actual professionals work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, like you know. You, you talking about Jimi Hendrix and stuff. What are some of your biggest influences? I would in probably music? say my biggest influence is two guitarists, and that would be Eddie Van Halen, and then like I said, Guthrie Govan. And when y'all get a chance to look him up, and you'll see, wow, this man can make. He can hear a bird chirp, and he'll nail it note for note. I think he's wow. got pitch perfect hearing or something. Wow. But them's probably my two biggest. Uh, what got me into music was my father. Uh, he was like, like I said a Buddy Holly fan so I listened to a lot of Buddy Holly and the Crickets I actually learned one of those songs called Peggy Sue we did it for a star search when I was like I think in third grade and won the star search really like this little picture of me that's and, cool man I still got that guitar on oh, star search man I remember watching <laughs> that shit dude <laughs> but, uh, well we had a little thing around here at school it was at the Doyle school they come down over here but uh, that's really cool though man yeah. you did something like that that guitar, though, it's got so many wars. Like, there's wood worn off. There's a teeth mark one out when I got drunk and bit it playing the solo for those up here during the Oh, yeah. Dude, that's awesome. I love it when a guitar, like, obviously, like, tells the story of its owner. It, those yes. are the most beautiful oh. guitars. There's one night I got so mad at it because it was messing up, and I unplugged my cable and come to find out it wasn't the guitar's fault. It was the cable's fault. But I unplugged it, and I stabbed the shit out of the guitar. So it was oh. a giant hole. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it tells stories. Toys, exactly. You know? yeah. Still rocking it, right? Oh, yeah, I still play it. Yeah, yeah. Some shows, I still rip it out. Like, if we do some Clapton and stuff, for that's that strat cool. tone, I, I whip gotcha. it out. Hell yeah, man. That, that, that's really cool. So, <laughs> since you, you've been in the studio around this album, have you, have you become like a tone chaser? Is there a certain sound I think that's I think for? that's where I'm at right now, is I'm always trying to chase the next step. Like, what? Used to when I first started out, it was you take gain, you turn it all the way up. The more distortion, like you said earlier, it covers up a lot of mistakes. Yeah, I got now to where I crank it back a lot. I mean, enough to where I can get sustain of a note and stuff. But you know, I've cranked it back a lot, and I'm playing clean. And I'm focusing on it. ever since I broke my wrist, I had to relearn how to play again. Mm. So I've learned a whole different way of playing, and I've gotten. In my opinion, and some of other people's, I've gotten faster and cleaner, which is fine. I've always tried to be the cleanest I can be when I play fast. Because if I play fast, I don't want to sound choppy, sloppy, or anything like that. I want to sound precise, like you hear every note. Yeah. That's just, I take pride in what I do. I've been doing it for 24 years. It's something that I love and enjoy. That's all. See, you know, like for me, it's like for, for the audience who don't know, like I've known, I, I don't think I've ever known a day with where I didn't know you. Mm-hmm. And you, I've always known you as like, oh, he's a fucking cool ass guitar. Same with like Kelly. You know, it's like uh, all y'all. I just got to just jam with him guitars. two days ago, and oh my God, I, he's one of my favorites to jam with. He's so bluesy and soulful, and he kind of got me into doing bends and stuff, and like the David Gilmore stuff, because his bends are just. Oh, they're sexy, dude. <laughs> Like, yeah. I want to caress those bitches. <laughs> I get full body and wretched when he does that. <laughs> <laughs> but he is. He's, he's one of my favorite guitars to play with. He's one of the very few. And see, our band's a four-piece band. You know, the, me as a guitarist, John's the vocalist, Daniel's the bass player, and then Calvin's the drummer. Which Calvin, Daniel, and John do vocals, backup, and stuff like that. But I, I, I wouldn't want another guitar player in my band. I like the way we sound. Now, I take a keyboard player 
or I'd let Kelly. Like, if Kelly ever wanted to come out and join the band, I don't think I think we're all in agreement. We'd let him. Because <laughs> he's just, he just got that feel like we do. And I yeah. Like he would, he yeah. would fit us. That's cool, man. That's but cool. he's got work and stuff, and I get that. Yeah. You know? Man, is there any, like, any band or anything that y'all could see working together with? Well, uh, uh, collabo with or anything? I told Alan from Blind Velvet if he ever wanted me to come do a song. Man, said, I could see y'all working together. I think awesome. that'd be really cool. He said, I. I, I believe he said, and I want to say he did. If he didn't, I'm going to say he did. Anyway. We're calling you out, sir. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to get together and do a That's little cool. jam and see where it goes from. There's a, there's this other guy. I think his name's Chris. I might get it wrong. I've only talked to him a few times, but he's in the Aaron Donald band or something like that. They're country rock, I want to say. Mm-hmm. I've listened to some of their stuff. I can see y'all going with some country rock. But I told him, you know, if they ever want to get together yeah. and jam. I, I like jamming with other musicians. I think that's cool, man. It, I mean, don't you learn from each other when yeah. you do that? You it, learn from the most. Yeah. I used to give lessons a long time ago. And and I took, yeah, you I think came, I took two lessons. You came too, yeah. Two, yeah. You yeah. came over to my house and I gave you two lessons. Your pops was there, too. And I, I think we just explained the dynamics, how you can read each people. And, and I was like, what? <laughs> 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 All kinds of losses. Well, you're a hell of a drummer, though. I've always enjoyed oh, jamming <laughs> with you. But, I appreciate uh, it. You know, That's cool. I can see you and Alan. Like Alan was a really cool guy. We interviewed him. Yeah. And, uh, from Blind Velvet, and he he, oh, he really, cracks me up. Yeah, he was really cool, man. Like he fits. Like I, I told him, I was like, man, you fit your your character, dude. I think he, he like, calls himself what the Space Cowboy. Love it. I love it. Cosmic Cowboy. Yeah. Yep, yep. I love it, man. And he fits his character. He does. <laughs> you know, he's, I love he's it. a cool cat. I've yeah. met I've met him, and I met I want to say it was the bass player. I didn't even really get uh, to talk. Matt. Yeah, I didn't really get to talk to him. But me and Alan stood over and talked. We played a benefit together uh, a couple months back and raised over $22,000. I mean, wow. there was a lot of yeah, bands, man. though. But, that's you know, cool. It was cool to be a part of that. that. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. That's really cool, man. And so, I, I, I'd love to see that one time. I'd love to see y'all get together and do some jam out. I'd yeah, like yeah. to do it any time he wants to. I'd like to see it countless days in uh, Blind Velvet. Fucking I've been trying to tell him. I'm like, look, buddy, we need to get together and play a show. Yeah. I know they just got signed. I think it was Red Claw. Or they did. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. But, That's uh, really cool. I mean, I, I don't know how long they... I can't remember how long they said they've been playing, but, I mean, they've been around for a little while, too. They came around right when our band had to take a break. Did and they? I, it's like, I think some people forgot about us. It's so <laughs> cool, though, to see that we got two bands like this close that represent in this area. It seems like the locals you know, are just thriving. I think it is. Honestly. I felt like, like when, when my band quit and then Blind Velvet was just kind of starting, yeah. live music was almost dead. Really? Oh my! Yeah. Oh my God! You couldn't go anywhere. It was always DJs. Nothing against DJs, but it's just not it's, it, it's not. Yeah, I'd rather see. I want to. I, I want a live person. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want just a mix thrown up. No. <laughs> you know? I don't want uh, wobble with it. Playing nonstop. <laughs> I mean, exactly. I don't mind seeing the women twerk to it. Of course, we get them twerking to some of our songs. There you go. But, you know, it helps. It helps. <laughs> I'm so glad to see the live music scene. There's yes, so man. many and I know bands. The, the pandemic probably took a big toll on, you know, especially bands like yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, and I and now that it's opening back up, I I hope I, I can't wait to see you guys out there doing your thing on these in getting out here to these uh, these bars and stuff and live shows, all this stuff. And with that, I mean, y'all got some stuff coming up. Yeah, uh, next month we play at Rockers. It's January, or not January, oh, December 10th. We're December playing 10th. at Rockers, and then... That's the mo- in hometown of Paducah, Kentucky, right? Yes, sir. Heck, yeah. That's where yeah. I was hatched at, so I gotta go back. You are a yeah. home one, yeah. 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 Bluegrass State. <laughs> <laughs> Heck, yeah, And then man. we got one uh, at the Rude Dog, January 7th, which is three days before my birthday, so we're gonna consider that one my birthday show. Birthday, birthday. Oh, absolutely. Show. Hell, yeah. So I might wear a tutu. I don't know what I'm <laughs> And then we got one... I think February 4th at Putzico, and it's uh, Duck Creek Landing, I think. That's the name of the place of it. So if any of y'all get a chance, check these guys out. Absolutely. Sadly, I have not had a chance to see y'all yet. Every time y'all played, I've had work, and I work at ungodly hours. (laughs) So I haven't had a chance, but I really want to, man. I know your uh, pop came and watched us. I always love it when Barry comes. Barry's one of my Isn't favorite people. Awesome, oh, Papa man. Barry, he's, he's cool. He is one of my favorite people in the entire world. Mm. <laughs> he came and watched us at the Matthews gig and then at the Boathouse gig, which we're going to probably play at the Boathouse, I want to say, either March, probably March, because Angie loved us the last time. So, and I love playing there. Oh, yeah. But Barry came in and watched us, and he enjoyed it. He of course, is I always, 
I always look for him for advice. Do I need to come up? Do I need to come down? Is it sounding good? Is it sounding good? <laughs> he is a true rocker, man. Yeah, he, he is. is a true rocker, dude. He is. Dad's a rock star, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, man. When I I got I know his dad before I knew this guy. Yeah. Yeah, like talking to him and stuff, and then he he started getting a slip knot and all that, and he's showing me all his tattoos and shit, and I was like, <laughs> man, you are true through and through. You're like I I love it. Just talking to him, the experience, like when he goes to the concerts and he'll tell you the story about. I'm like. I could just listen to him all day. I'm like, huh. <laughs> I you love see, it. Before we formed Countless Days, we was actually jamming with Dre's dad. Mm-hmm. Really? Dre. That's and cool. We had one guy come down. I'm not going to say names for personal reasons, but yeah. he, he came down, brought this huge PA and stuff like that. And we jammed. And I guess, I don't know, I, I scared him off or something because... When I play, I get into it. I might take and play one-handed. I might do something. And he just—he never came back. And I don't know if it's because maybe he didn't like our style or what. He wouldn't even answer my phone messages or nothing. So I was like, all right. <laughs> well, he, your dad was a big hardcore Kiss fan, wasn't he? Yes, he was back in the day. Yeah. Surely I can't see you scaring him off. No, not his dad. Oh, I thought he was talking no, about. No, oh, no, I thought no. I was like, man, no, I can't. The guy oh. who brought the big PA. My bad. The guy was like, confused. I'm going to bring all this big stuff. He's like, I brought my seven string guitar. I'm like, okay. Well, they were. I, I had an eight. First time jam. It's oh, uh, I brought an eight string guitar just because I wanted to. Because he wanted to. Sing. Sounds like y'all showed him up. Well, that's the thing. That's, that's, that's <laughs> that's one thing I, I, I can't stand is when you see a musician and they're like, oh, we're the fucking best you're ever going to hear. And they suck donkey cock. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Just a big yeah. one. And it's like, yeah. you know, have pride and confidence in what you do. But don't be too... There's, with it. I mean, yeah, like I, I love like certain artists, but there's other artists that can play better songs than what they can. You know, the people I love. You know, it, 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 you're never gonna, be, you cannot be closed minded about the stuff. Mm-mm. No, do not. There's say, always somebody better. Yeah, that's always. exactly gonna yeah, say. Yeah, don't that's sit I, there and say I'm the best. You, come on. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's what gets you. I get you cut down real. Well, I used to tell a lot of my students. I, I probably told you that. I said there's always gonna be somebody better than you, and you can always learn from somebody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for I was, sure. I was teaching one kid, and he played this riff. I'm like, how, how did you come up with that? And I ended up stealing it. <laughs> 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 Most your musicians are gonna admit to being thieves. Like, well, we always yes. steal a lick or a fill or something from somebody. Gotcha. Because it's already been invented, we just got to put our twist on it. Exactly, you're right, man. This is very true. It I is. mean, most musicians are thieves besides. <laughs> <laughs> We're just making music, man. Yeah, that's it. I wouldn't mind for like one of our songs we wrote to get Alan to come either do vocals or play guitar on it. You know, I. Cool shit. I think we're going to get Kelly to come do a guest solo on one of ours. Oh, yeah. um, that'd be awesome, that dude. That'd be cool, yeah. As, as far as I know, he's wanting to do it. And I'm, Man, like, do you guys have an album that's coming about? Uh, we're finishing the one we got on mm-hmm. uh, Spotify and what's well, on all streaming services. Let's just say that. Gotcha. Uh, there's, yeah, like, yeah. so many to name. Uh, yeah, I found you guys on a couple different places. I mean, Spotify is my main resource I go to for music, but... Like, I found you guys on other platforms as well. So, yeah. I, I, I use Apple because I got to be the cool kid and have an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be the cool thing. But, you know, uh, we're on that. We're on, I've seen, like, TikTok. You can type our name in. And oh, yeah. Use our name. It's like, I have right. not checked it out, but I will, sir. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's cool. We're working after we finish completing this album, which I think we got two more songs to record. Like I said, y'all heard that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to put out that Mississippi River afterwards. And then after that, we're going to record the complete new album we're working on. Sweet, Woo! man. I'm glad to hear Do we got that. a working title right now, or are we not mm-hmm. wanting to give it away? We ain't got a title yet. We just got, like I said, about six songs, and we've got some names to them and stuff. But John still right. I've never seen somebody be able to write like he does. Like, our writing process with him and I, or if we're out there with the whole band, we'll play one part over a couple of times. Before we know it, he's got a whole verse to that one part. He's <laughs> all right, next part. So we do the next part, and then before we know it, we've got the entire song. We run through it a few times, do some tweets. Yeah. One of our newest songs is sounding a lot like old school Ozzy and Zach. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, and it's probably the hardest song to play. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I wrote it, so that's the bitch of it. Is it's one of our hardest songs to play because it's man. got some changes and stuff in. Mm. It. Man, I got a question for you, man. Like, okay, you've been doing this for how long now? Twenty four years. Twenty four years. If you could give one piece of information to somebody who's trying to walk in your same footsteps, what sure. would you give them, bro? Uh, 
what would I tell them? Is, well, for one, especially the way the day and age is, don't don't give up. Because there's always somebody like y'all said that's better. But also, just practice your, your ass off. Yeah. The rule of it is, is 10,000 hours is when you can say you're close to being a professional or when you've developed enough talent. And I do see that, you know, like I've practiced, I can't tell you how many times. I've sat in front of the TV watching shows and just playing. I mean, that guitar wasn't plugged up or anything, or I've took the guitar to school. They used to let us take it to school, mm-hmm. which now you can't because shootings and stuff, that sucks. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they'd let us take guitars to school. I used to keep one out of my truck at work, and, you know, I just always practice, practice, and always trying to learn something new and listen to stuff new, like something you may not even think you like. Like I told you, I didn't know if I'd like Post Malone. Mm-hmm. And the next thing I know, I'm YouTube and him like, oh, well, this guy's a natural musician. Yeah. Yeah. So you like I said, you gotta experiment. You gotta try something new. You may not like it the first time. You may not like it the second time. It's like anal sometimes. You just gotta put <laughs> it in there. <laughs> you just gotta go with it. <laughs> not to me. Yeah. Okay. Never... <laughs> no, absolutely not. No. Oh. That's great. <laughs> That's some good. That is good advice, sir. It's good advice. I can't give that last part to a kid though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the part you live over there. You're yeah, like, well, yeah. we'll cut it off here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not a priest. We'll have to talk when you're 18. <laughs> oh, shit, that's great. <laughs> Man, if any, I hope you guys get out. And if you don't get out and check their shows, check their music out. You guys are really awesome, and it's just, it's, it's fun, like, listening to you guys. And, like, <laughs> when I first listened to you guys, I got that first couple of songs I listened to it was it, I got that kind of that 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 older rock feel that's what I got I've had I picked people up. tell us we sound more like a heavier style 90s I, yeah I, yeah, I yeah, yeah yeah that's, that's the feel, biggest thing yeah. I get is 90s yeah rock. I can feel so, that I'm like man and then Sins of Flesh and there's a couple others though it's different you know it's like every drop's one of my favorite ones it's just got that pul- pulsing beat that I really yeah I really enjoy Mississippi River, though, like I said, when we get this new production out, it sounds a whole lot better than the one that's on YouTube. The one that's on YouTube, you can hear the metronome in the back. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that reminds me of, like, the first Guar record. You can hear, like, cars honking and shit outside. <laughs> oh, a realistic feel. Huh? Yeah. One of my favorite recordings is of uh, When the Levee Breaks by Led Zeppelin. You can actually hear the squeaking of John Bonham's kick. Yeah. I love that. That I mean, is perfect. I, it works for some reason. Yeah. You know, any other time you try to edit shit like that out, and I'm like, no, leave that in now. That sounds great. Yeah, Hell yeah man. Hell yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy, what I usually try to tell people if they come watch us, it's more of like an experience. I mean, we do play a lot of dancing stuff for the people, but mm. we like to really give people a show. Do y'all ever jump out of y'all element and oh. do something like just off the wall weird, weird shit? Oh, yeah. There was one time we uh, had a like a backing thing going like Daniel brings his laptop and we'll play music in between while we're taking breaks uh-huh. well my ass sometimes don't go off stage I'm up there and Coolio was playing oh uh, shit so I started <laughs> playing along with it Gangster's Paradise it? oh yeah it had to be that one <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Coolio yeah. but uh yes sir <laughs> but yeah I you know that happened. we try to step out of our element like I said we do play country and that's way out of my element you never never was you never a fan of country uh, like I said, you I was I grew bit, up yeah. with it. My very first song I ever learned is Wildwood Flower, and it's one of it's a country ass song. I think Keith Fleetwood played. I'm not sure, but it, it was hard for me to play. Uh-huh. My, which I got baby hands now. I can't even hold a whopper. <laughs> like they say, you got two small hands. You can't order a whopper. <laughs> you gotta get a chicken sandwich. <laughs> All right, chicken sandwich. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, that's good shit. <laughs> But, you know, yeah, country is one of them that's out of my le- element, but we'll play it. What, what I mean, you just don't like it? Or, I just, it's, it's curious. I like the older country. This newer country is just not for me, I'll say. I got you. I, mean, I don't like the new country. I, I'm on with you there. I like that I like that outlaw kind of shit. But, there, you know, I'm going to say there's an artist that I love, and I tell everybody this, and I listen to Jelly Roll a lot. Oh, I love him. I mean, because he's got that, he's got... All of it all together, man. I think the song that introduced me to him was called Save Me, I think, or something. Yes. Oh, and I gave yeah. I gave me a whole different... Because I've seen him, and I've never clicked on it. Man, he started, like, when I first listened to him, I, like, I got to meet him one time, and uh, listening to him, he was rapping. He was trap music. He was, like, your drug dealing. <laughs> you know, he was he was doing all that. But then he, he, he like, he, I don't know, he started throwing stuff together, you know, just mixing it up with your 
and like the older he's got, he throws more blues, country, and soul into his music. Like, I heard that. Me. Oh, that oh, guy. man. I actually learned how to play that. And then Did I, you really? And I was like, well, let me see how if Jimi Hendrix, I do that sometimes. Like, I wonder if, like, how if Jimi Hendrix played this, how would he play this? Oh, man, yeah. So I try to do that. That would be cool, man. I'm going to have to listen to your version one time. You must play it for me. I was going to post that. it one day. we got to go see him. Yes, most definitely, dude. I'd, I'd love to have y'all. Hell, Maybe yes. you can come to the Paducah show since it's hell your home yes. state. Home state, man. I would love to do that, man. Yeah, you said it's December uh, 10th. 10th. Rockers. You have to know what day that is. <laughs> oh, I man. believe it's a Saturday is what I want to say. We got plenty of time, though. We can put in for some of that. That's cool, man. I would love to do I that. I love playing there, man. Hell yeah. Yo, you played there before? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. That's we cool. We played there one year, and I <laughs> I can't remember the song we was playing, but there were these, these chicks out here <laughs> dancing, and this one chick, she was a very plus-sized woman, and she fell, I know, four times. <laughs> She'd stand up. Wham! Stand up. Wham! So the song we played right after that was Wipeout. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody laughed. We didn't play the whole song, but she got the point. She, she got <laughs> one, And one of the coolest things about playing there is we played there, and there was a packed bar, and we had people coming up. So y'all like professionally signed band? We actually signed drum steps. Which I, we've done that quite a bit here lately. Signed stuff for people. Yeah, oh, that's, and, that's and cool. it's a good I feeling. Mean, that's a wicked feeling. What was your yeah. how the first feeling? Hey, can I have your autograph? Yeah, sure. <laughs> what do you want on your titty? Oh, you're a guy. Sorry. <laughs> Wait a minute. You still want it there? Cause it's that. It's okay. <laughs> no. Uh, one guy he asked for one of my guitar picks, and I played with some of these smallest guitar picks. My like, buddy, I can't sign this. <laughs> You're right. Plus, they're like three dollars a pick, man. Come on. <laughs> but I ended up. I think I was, we signed one of Calvin's drumsticks, all of us, and gave it to him. That's cool. Man. That's cool. Do they have? You got fans. You yeah. got fans, bro. Have you, <laughs> I, I know me growing up as like like a wanting to be a motherfucking rock star. I have practiced my signature millions of times. Oh, Did you do that? Yeah, mine. I got mine to a T. <laughs> oh, you know, you got, yes. Yeah, yeah that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm still I, working on mine. It's hard, though, to sign in on drums. And then when we were selling CDs at one time, or we were signing CDs, too. You know, and this is... Which now everything's, you know, streaming. Well, for me, though, like, I go to, like, a little, lot of, a lot of house bar bands and stuff, and it, I always, you know, you don't, sell, they still sell CDs, CDs, singles and stuff at, at their shows. I will buy one just to get an autograph. On that CD scene. Well, if we can find one of our old ones, I'll sign one where I'll have the whole band sign. Dude, Maybe a sticker, too. I would love it. Oh, sure, God. Oh, man. Yeah. Hell yeah, we'll, hell yeah, we'll put here. it up here. Yeah, that's great, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about that, man, because y'all been working your ass off. And y'all y'all deserve every bit of the praise y'all get. We're, yeah. we're getting ready to get shirts again. We're, we're looking at, like, shirts. Ooh, maybe that's yeah. cool, See, man. See, we got that's shirts definitely. a long time ago, and... We're wanting ones now. We got our actual sign, which I don't know if you've seen. It's the infinity sign with a bunch of birds. So it yeah. works out perfect on one of my guitars, a PRS. It's got the dove symbol all the way down it. So it fits perfect. That's, cool. that's the only reason I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it sounded good, and one of my favorite colors is green. None, <laughs> None of, that. of that. How did y'all come about y'all's? Uh, y'all's uh... Oh, the design. Yeah. I, I'll even tell you the name, how it came up. I want to say to this day, of course, we was a little intoxicated. No, I don't believe that. No, musicians <laughs> don't drink. But uh, we was always trying to come up with band names. Me, my band names that I was coming up with were so stupid. They Bullet wasn't at the time, surely. Oh, yeah, yeah. I could... No, I'll give you the, the two of them. One of them was a bulletproof tortoise and fireproof mattress. <laughs> I, I don't know. I respect that, dog. I <laughs> was a fireproof mattress. Hell, well, yeah. one was going to be a reggae band. Bulletproof <laughs> tortoise? I'm down with that one, bro. That's, one That's a good punk rock name. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I think it, I want to say it was John that said countless days, and Calvin agreed to it. And I said, you know, that's when we, of course, we got when we caught a book, we got to tell people, make sure you spell it D A Z E. I will never make that mistake again, sir. I know. Right. <laughs> I will yeah. never do it again. <laughs> that's really cool, man. I, I mean, we got banners and stuff now, which Big John bought a banner, and I guess he didn't read the measurements, but it's like. It's the size of a 50 foot trailer. <laughs> like, well, if we decide to play up river, we're hanging on my truck and just go up and sail. <laughs> you know, but. You can play down the river playing. Hell yeah. yeah. Just play down the river. Probably man. a casino boat. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. 
Hell yeah, you can perform for the people on shore and on the boat. Dude, look at there. We've been wanting to do a music video, but man, we can't really find anybody that knows how to do it. Or Man, I'd love to see y'all do something like that. That'd be great, man. We Is do. there a certain song you'd want to do? Yeah, it'd be Mississippi River because the river. River. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Because I know got... people are on barges and stuff, but I wouldn't mind doing a little bit on that. Yeah, that'd something. be really cool, man. That's cool. Man, of course, it's talking about killing somebody in that song, so we got to be careful. Wow. <laughs> it, was like, it was like when we released that song, there was a body found down the river, and I was like, oh, this is kind of sus. <laughs> man, that kind of shit happens all the time around here. <laughs> what are you talking about? As the great Shaggy said, it wasn't me. It wasn't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just because there's a song about it about the time, it don't mean it. <laughs> you know, when the river runs it. dry, I have been waiting for some bones to be found oh, or some sort oh, of you song. know there's like bajillion bodies all dude, Oh, dude, there, there's yeah. an ungodly amount of I remember Stop my it, my dad. He used to work on the riverboat. He remember telling me like you know they would uh, be working on the barges and they move barges and then a body would float up, just pop out of nowhere. Like really, fuck that. Is that, a, is that how it works? Is like <laughs> fuck. Is that, is he just walk it off after push, that. Push him over. <laughs> yeah, get him out of the way. I damn it. Where is <laughs> see, I worked at the river down at eight AM loading grain barges. You'd yeah. see like a like a twenty two inch car rim and tire just plop. <laughs> and then plop back down Shit. and back up again. And they're like, eh. <laughs> I'm out here trying to get the motherfucker. Like, yeah. Hey, I need money. <laughs> <laughs> what if that car still runs? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. You see some strange shit in that river. I, I kid do. you not. Man, yeah, it seems like it's everybody's go-to place to get rid of something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is some shit in there, guys. <laughs> Man, guys, man, I've had a lot of fun this episode. How about y'all? Oh, I've enjoyed myself. Absolutely. Man, we can't thank you enough for coming and joining us. Anytime. Yeah, we really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Can't wait to have you back. Mm-hmm. Maybe next time I come back, I'll have y'all all kinds of merchandise. Oh, man. and Just, just going to shower us in countless things. Yes, things. just to I'll make it throw. rain. Yeah, I started to say, hell yeah. That's what I'm looking we'll forward to. We'll get some thongs, some boy shorts, <laughs> some flip flops. Can I get some official nipple uh, tassels? Mm-hmm. Thank you. It, oh, I will. He's like, I already got it in the works. <laughs> I, I got some for myself. <laughs> <laughs> clamp thongs, though. They don't stick. They clamp. All right, yeah. I'm down with that. I've known you long enough. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. You guys, y'all get a chance. Check these guys out. Check them out on the show. Check the music out. He's a lot of fun, man. Uh, If you get a chance to talk to him. We may even do a comedy bit, you know. Fucking hey, oh, bro. Dude, I can yes. see you doing that. Because me and John go back and forth and Calvin and Dan. Yeah, we all give. It, it's always a trip. <laughs> yeah, great, really great. So, is there anything else y'all want to throw in here before we call it a day? Be sure to check them out. That's about it. Mm, type us in on Facebook. Add us as a friend. Most we, usually, we usually post all our shows Check there. out, uh, you got your Facebook and you got your band's Facebook. Is it Callous Days? Yeah. Just D-A-Z-E, count. don't forget. Yes. <laughs> D-A-Z-E. E. <laughs> I'll let the man without the lisp say it, because if I do it, it's going to be like, what'd he say? <laughs> Great, man. Check them out. Friend don't, man. Just Send us messages, us. send yeah. nudes. We'll <laughs> <laughs> He's down for anything, man. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, thank you again, and we are C&V, Coffee and Vodka.